your questions. I'm answering your questions. As you know, I have a Facebook group and before you get into the Facebook group, there is like a short little whatever questionnaire. And I ask you, what do you need to know? And so one of the questions that you have is, do narcissistic ever feel remorse? And that's the question that I'm answering for you today. Hello, my name is Denise Kavaleskis and I am a woman's transformational love coach specializing in helping women heal after abusive relationships, toxic relationships, narcissistic relationships, traumas, dramas, and all of the past heartaches and heartbreaks that you've had in relationships and that's what I do. And today I'm answering this question in depth of do narcissistic people feel remorse? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay it out in three ways. Um, I could always give you the short answer, and then leave you hanging, and then you have more questions. So I want to go into this to really give you what you want, what you need to know. So if you find any value in this video, please smash that like button. And if you want to know when I upload a video, subscribe to the channel. Not only does it let you know when I upload a new video, but it also helps grow the channel. And the more that we can heal from abusive relationships, from these toxic people, the better our planet will be. Okay, let's get into it. <clears throat> so, do narcissistic, do narcissistic ever feel remorse? So, for themselves, yes. For other people, no. So there's some things that you need to understand when we're talking about toxic people, narcissistic people. They lack empathy and compassion for other people. This is something that can be tricky, and I'm gonna give you an example of how tricky it can be if you don't know, right? So, mm, if you know, if you follow me, you know that I was married for 22 years in a toxic relationship and my ex was, is very narcissistic. And he is the grandiose, the overt kind, lucky, lucky us. And there was this incident where it was early in the morning, our children were little and we were driving to his parents' house. I believe it was a Sunday morning. So what does that mean? That means there was a lot less traffic. That means the roads were empty. That means everything like had like this calm to it. So we're driving early in the morning. Like I said, the two kids are with us. I would say they were like five or six or something like that. And he, we as a family see this accident, which is a like a tow truck or something that had like the two fork things on the back. He was backing up into the main road and I guess he couldn't see because he was facing the other way. Anyway, there was this taxi car um, and the fork thing pierced through the glass and hit the woman inside and hit her head. Yes, there was blood and yes, it was, it was, it was kind of chaotic, but my ex stayed very cool, calm, and collective. And what he did was he stopped the car, he walked over, he got a big whatever, and he put pressure, called 911, very cool, calm, and collective, got the ambulance there. Once he saw the ambulance there, he literally handed over the situation to the ambulance, got in the car, we went on our merry way. Well, here's what I want you to notice that I didn't notice back then. Oh my God, I'm thinking, you're such a hero. You like, because I or anybody else would have been flipping out, right? Because you feel compassion and empathy for this person, you feel, right? Um, no, so he, so, so here is where I was like, okay, wow, like you're the hero. There was never 
on his part, there was never like, oh, I hope that woman's okay. I hope, or I've, I've been thinking about her all day. That kind of like stayed in my mind. Um, I really like hope she, you know, she made it. She's, you know, right? Thinking about the other person. It was more of like, yeah, look at me. I'm the hero, right? The, I'm this wonderful, great person. So that's where I say, and what the example that I wanted to show you about the lack of empathy and compassion for other persons, other people. So yeah, they have this for themselves, like poor me and I never get a break and all of that, but they don't have the compassion or um, empathy for other people. And that's a great example of an incident where, yeah, he did great, do the right thing. That was wonderful. I'm not dimming that at all. But I want to show you the emotional piece to that, to where there was no emotion, there was no compassion, there was no empathy for the other person. It was just, you know, he did what he did. He now was the hero and, and ate it up because me and the kids, like that's, you know, all we did that whole day when there and thereafter, but there was no um, empathy or compassion for the other person. Okay. So that's the other piece that I wanted to share with you so that you can get a glimpse of how the emotion piece of how these people operate. Um, so yeah, they are very um, disconnected. This is another great sign for you to know, do they ever feel remorse? They're very disconnected. You have to be connected emotionally to feel remorse for other people. So this question is very, it, it, it was simply, does the narc ever feel remorse? Um, this person didn't say for other people, for themselves. I'm gonna just go with she assumed for other people since she's in my group and she's probably a victim of a narcissistic relationship. So they, yeah, they're not emotionally connected. This is a huge sign for you going into relationships or determining if this relationship is going to work, maybe the one that you're in, to know if this person is emotionally connected. Now, listen, ladies, I know men are more, let me rephrase that. I know that us women are more emotional than men are. It's true, we are. That being said, there's still things for you to know if your man or the, the, the man you're dating is emotionally connected. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to how he talks about other people, how he reacts to certain things. Like that, that example that I just gave to you could have been two people going out on a date and something could have happened in the street or at the restaurant or whatever. And you notice that he's all about, yes, praise me. I am so wonderful. I'm so great. I'm the hero, but doesn't show compassion or empathy for the other person. Or he does it in a way that's very stoic is the word that just came to me. It's very stoic about it. He's it's like he's faking, he is faking, he's faking being concerned about the other person. It's more of like, more for me, more for me, more for me. Okay, so those are the three ways, those are the three in-depth answers for you to know if do narcissistic people feel remorse. This is a great educational piece for you to know, but honestly, the only way for you to never attract a narcissistic person in your life again is for you to heal, heal from it, heal, heal. Not counseling, not therapy. Those, however, those are great foundations, but it is not healing. Healing is the key. So you can read books and those are great, those are great great foundations, but healing, it's the key. It's the key to wipe all of this out and just let people be people and come from a place of not being triggered. It's a lot of freedom inside of you. Oh, such freedom. Okay. So here's my invitation to you. I have a Facebook group. 
called Life After Narcissism. I'm going to put the link in the description below. And I am inviting you to come and join us over there. There's so many training videos in there. Um, there's daily posts, sometimes two and three. Some of them are funny about narcissistic people, but they're going to educate you. Um, some of them are educational pieces that you need to know. Some of them are inspiring and motivational and, and all of that in the group, Life After Narcissism. And then also I'm doing a webinar this Thursday, August 6, 2020 called Three Keys to Having True Love After Toxic Love. This is what I've created for myself. This is what I love to share with everybody on the planet, how to have true love after toxic love. And I'm doing the webinar this Thursday, August 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will also drop that link in the comments below. You simply put your name and your email address in when you click the link on the page, you will immediately get an email with the details to the webinar. I'm gonna give you three pieces three keys to healing um, so that you can have true love after toxic love. This is my mission. This is my passion to share with you. I want, 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 want you all to have and experience true love. You deserve it. Why? Because you are love. Um, that's just one of the reasons. But those are the two invitations for you, my loves. If any of this video gave you value, please smash like button. Let me know that you liked it. Let me know you want more of it. Comment below and let me know what questions do you have. Maybe you don't have a Facebook group. Maybe you just want to put the, it in the comments below. Give me your questions. I get notified on my whoop phone and that way I reply right away. I put it in my notes. And also, if you want more of these videos, subscribe to my channel. Two reasons. One, you get notified when I upload a video and two, it grows the channel. So by you simply hitting like, commenting and subscribing, you are also helping to heal more women and men just like you who've been through these experiences because it helps grow the channel, reach more people and that's how together we conquer this. We heal abuse and have heaven on earth, peace on earth, more healing in the planet. All right, my loves, I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching my videos, for commenting, liking, and subscribing. It's so amazing. All right, until the next video.